afternoon, everyone. I hope you're not frozen yet. Um, we are presenting our work on behalf of uh, Snickers 21 educators and researchers today. We'll discuss the challenges in education and in translation, and we will have also called for actions in this space for the community. So our society nowadays is ever more reliant on data in all aspects of life. Consequently, as educators and members of this um, scientific and global community, we think it's our responsibility to actively think about improving education and visualization. We need to engage in knowledge transfer, we need to develop creative and practical approaches to education and visualization, and we need to lead the research in this space. But why visualization education is so different? Of course, we can learn from education discipline, and general education um, theories, but teaching visualization needs its own con consideration and individual consideration. And um, I think many of you probably have encountered this in learning visualization or teaching it. And it needs a combination of different knowledges, um, theory and applied crafting. Uh, we often need domain knowledge in the space that we're actually um, creating visualization. Uh, problem solving skills, um, creativity and design, design thinking, and on top of that, we need a knowledge of data and technology. So, we think currently visualization is lacking a theory of education and an established body of knowledge in, on its own. We were very happy to see that the community actually thinking about this. In the past few days, we saw a lot of research activity in the conference about um, this topic. And to build such a theory, we should also take this even further and ask questions and answer these questions such as what are the challenges in visualization education? Um, what research questions and opportunities arise from these challenges? So to answer some of these questions, we gathered 40 people from different <coughs> countries, academic, practitioner, um, most of us were teaching data visualization in a doctoral seminar called Visualization Empowerment, How to Teach and Learn Data Visualization. And after a week of discussion and activities, we wrap up the seminar thinking and wondering how can we actually identify these challenges for data visualization education? And we quickly realized identifying these challenges and agreeing on them is rather difficult. <laughs> Some of us decided to take our discussions further and outline these challenges. So to understand the diversity of the members that we had, as um, you saw we have 21 members, um, through a lot of group discussions and meetings, um, we collected a really rich and um, diverse experience from everyone. Um, people were from different backgrounds, and some had teaching experience, um, many years of teaching um, experiences, and some were teaching for the first time, um, teaching a student um, at the university or practitioners. Um, through hours of discussion, we collected an initial list of 60 individual challenges for education, and then we refined and reformulated these challenges through several follow-up meetings and town halls for several months after the seminar. Through this rigorous process, we came up with um, seven teams of challenges, which encompasses of 19 practical challenges. And from those, we identified 43 research questions. And then from them, we had five opportunities and call for action for the community to think further about. So let's have a look now on these challenge themes first. We started with the challenge related to people who are involved in education, like learners and educators. Some challenges about setting learning goals and planning assessment in the context of data visualization. We also identified challenges in motivating people to offer visualization courses and the methods, learning goals and materials that are used in data visualization education. And lastly, we discussed how we can adapt to changes in this field. I will use now the challenge theme learning goals and assessment as an example. So the first challenge is about identifying learning goals for our specific audience, their needs, skills, pre-knowledge and the way 
we use visualization in their daily lives. Here we face the challenge that we don't have an agreed on list or taxonomy on learning goals specific for visualization. Depending on the audience, also our data with courses focus on different topics and learning goals. So we might focus on learning goals that require technical knowledge. For example, when we use the tree to develop an interactive visualization. Or we might focus on learning goals that require domain knowledge, such as visualizing medical data. Or we need design knowledge for designing a novel visualization technique. We can address these challenges by, uh, with research and have to ask, how can we develop learning goals specific to data visualization for diverse groups of learners? Or how can we evaluate assessment methods for these learning goals? The second challenge addresses both learners and educators and focuses on the assessment to measure if the learning goals are met. We often use a project-based learning approach in our courses and identify the challenge how we can assess creative and project-based work in a fair and efficient manner. When it comes to fairness, we discuss how much freedom should we give learners in choosing a tool to create a visualization. Shall we provide a certain tool or is it better to let them choose a tool that uh, fits their project needs? For example, the tree is, requires much more effort in learning this tool. The same discussion we had with the selection of a data set. Learners can select a toy data set or choose a dirty real-world data set that requires much more effort and cleaning. Also, group work makes it challenging to, to, to assess individual contributions in a fair manner, especially in interdisciplinary groups where learners might have and develop different skills. And assessment also has to be efficient. And it was interesting that we had also a talk before in this session uh, who assessed um, a part of this challenge. Um, so assessing creative and project-based work with qualitative feedback is very time intense and we need strategies, especially in large classrooms, to provide feedback in a timely manner. Again, we need research to address this challenge. For example, we can ask, how do we assess learners working with different data sets, technologies, and collaborators? Yeah, so please take a look at uh, our paper for the other six, six uh, challenge themes. So departing uh, from these themes, we then discuss how we can, can move forward to address these challenges and, and questions. And we base this discussion on, on five opportunities. <coughs> So, uh, first, to embrace diversity and inclusion in, forms, in terms of learners, educators, topics, methods, and materials to create a better education for the individual. Second, to act with agility to, and to, to embrace our novel technologies such as AI, to acknowledge responsibility in teaching for teaching the next generation of this having people and how these people in turn will shape the future of our field and to conduct the research to provide the evidence about what works and in which situations. While we also discuss research as an, as an opportunity in our paper, um, Mandy already uh, talked at length about some of these, these uh, questions we identified. Um, so here I will uh, focus on this next uh, opportunity um, uh, about our community. And in, in, in considering communities and how to, to build these, we see opportunities for, for connecting to, to networks of practitioners, such as the database society, for connecting to uh, educators and policy makers beyond academia, such as people uh, that educate professionals. There was just another talk in the last session on, on, on uh, education in professional contexts. Uh, and for building stronger uh, ties with academic education communities, such as uh, scholars of teaching and learning, uh, who might, for example, help us conduct the rigorous and impactful research that we envision. So finally, we need academic and non-academic physical and online platforms to exchange knowledge, uh, experience, 
um, uh, evidence, uh, materials, um, activities, and, and guidelines. <clears throat> and uh, we want to make it clear that our work is first and foremost a call to action. This challenges that we identified as just 21 uh, authors, and we, we invite all of you to, to submit the challenges that you experience in teaching. Um, you can share this uh, with us on this following uh, site. So please go to the form. We want to, to hear from you and, and help make the community actually aware some of these challenges. And with that, uh, we uh, thank you for listening and are happy to take questions. And I want to point out that we just three here. There's uh, ten of us at the conference. You can see us uh, highlighted in red here. Uh, so yeah, please come and talk. We have time for a few questions, so I'm sure there's a lot of educators in the room here. Um, thank you for the inspiring uh, study and talk. So I'm wondering whether um, you think we really need uh, an agreement on visualization education and whether we really need a unified way to teach visualization. Because I noticed that you also mentioned a lot of like creativity, uh, inclusion, diversity in visualization teaching. Should we embed such kind of spirit into our teaching and um, agree that we, we shouldn't have a unified way to teach visualization? Great, great question. Uh, at least speaking from my point of view, there's 21 authors again. I don't think we all would agree on everything we say in this paper. <laughs> uh, the, the, point, the point is actually that, that we need to think about a multiple of, of possibilities and, and being able to share what, what we as individuals have seen working well. And of course there will be things that we will probably down the line all agree on. For instance, activities is something that we, I think as a community, for a while have thought that's important to think about in terms of, of visualization education. There's probably loads of, of other aspects of education that we will agree on. Some things we will disagree on, maybe it's because of disciplinary backgrounds, maybe it's because of the, the situations we teach in. So for sure that there's stuff we'll agree on and stuff we'll probably, maybe not strongly disagree on, but not find as useful. All right, I think that's all we have time for. It's 5 p.m. I just, as future paper share, did you all just create conflict between 21 people? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure that was a good idea. Hey, excellent work. Thank you, everyone, and let's thank the speakers and all the speakers for the day. I'm sure everyone who is going to be up here for further questions, so please take advantage of it.